Welcome, I'm Amanda Pickett, consultant at the State Department of Education. My role centers around school climate, bullying prevention, supports, and restorative practices. This session focuses on school climate and the impact on attendance. This is meant to be a reflective session, so you might want to think about how you best document new learning. At various times in the training, I'm going to prompt and prompt a stop and jot. So you can create a T-chart. Um, what are things that you're doing already? That would be your confirmations that you want to keep up. And then on the right side, things you might want to adapt or change, or maybe even learn more about. The content for this session comes um, primarily from the resources listed here. Please feel free to check these out, along with a few more resources shared at the end. So our learning targets for this session. One, to understand the connection of school climate and attendance, to become familiar with a comprehensive approach to positive school climate, and then to evaluate tier one practices in alignment with attendance goals, and hopefully share some resources to support this work moving forward. So what is school climate? Connecticut has defined school climate as the quality and character of school life with a particular focus on the quality of the relationships within the school community between and among students and adults. Research affirms what teachers already know, which is that the classroom experience of students is powerful in shaping their response to school and learning. Although a safe and supportive school-wide climate can help prevent bullying, the research suggests that the safety starts in the classroom. So numerous studies have confirmed that a positive classroom climate provides many benefits for students. Among other things, it can mitigate bullying. Students who feel close to their teachers have been shown to work harder in school, attend school more regularly, there's the link to attendance, and have more confidence in their academic abilities. A positive school climate tends to build stronger feelings of connectedness to the school for both students and adults, which is important in reducing or even preventing bullying or other harmful behaviors in schools and classrooms. At the State Department of Ed, we are thinking critically about how to do this work right. We want to be strategic in how we're using data, analyzing it, and determining our concentration and area of focus, and the selection of evidence-based practices. We're engaging stakeholders, like all of you, families, students, community partners, and school personnel um, are critical in our approach. It's important to note that all of our strategies have equity in mind, and we're thoughtful and purposeful in their design to dismantle barriers. The State Department of Ed is taking a multidisciplinary, comprehensive approach to support educators, students, families, and community wellness. Our approach is based on the philosophy of supporting districts and selecting strategies that fit the context of their needs. This includes informing, ed informing, educating, and preparing educators so they can make an impact on student outcomes. The State Department of Ed is engaging in many projects, supports, and initiatives that are aligned to student wellness. Together, these various pieces contribute to positive school climate and overall wellness. All of the State Department of Ed's divisions and bureaus are using their lens of expertise to support wellness. Guidance, professional learning, and supports have been developed so districts can do their best at supporting their educators and students around school climate, mental health, social emotional learning, engagement, and much more. All right, so here's my triangle. Can't do a tri training without a triangle. So I want to pause for a moment and think about I want you to pause for a moment and think about your district or school's multi-tiered framework, critically examining what we're doing universally to support student outcomes and how we build this framework for decision making to ensure additional supports are provided to those in need. Developing systems to support strategic and effective layering of supports to ensure the outcomes that we're looking for is critical. Ensuring that this is a team center process where stakeholder engagement is key. That means students, families, community members engagement. Looking critically at your data and how you're using this information to make decisions about practices and strategies. This includes data for progress monitoring and monitoring fidelity of implementation. The strategies and practices are what make direct impact on students. This is your instruction, your curriculum, your classroom management strategies and supports. It should be noted that every school's triangle is different. Context matters. Understanding how to use data to determine your students and schools needs to ensure that you're selecting the practices that will create a healthy continuum of supports. We don't want initiative fatigue. What we're hoping for is that districts are intentional about assessing their current practices, analyzing their data and finding ways to align and integrate the strategies to create an approach that is truly unique to their school's needs. Attendance work has a tiered model for your attendance strategies. Note in tier one, engaging school climate. This is a foundational to setting up inclusive env environments where students feel welcomed, included, seen, and that where they want to be. 
When thinking about school climate and attendance, selecting the evidence-based practice is key. Unfortunately, many people make these selections based on previous experiences, a recent training they attended, or by phoning a friend. It's important to instead use the information, data, and stakeholders, including students and families, around you to make this decision. Each district and school have unique needs that have to be considered when making this critical selection. We also don't want to keep on loading new strategies and practices. We need to stop, evaluate what we have, how is it working, and make determinations about adjusting, continuing, or discontinuing before adding new. We're going to look at this a little bit deeper in a minute. So the hexagon tool from the National Implementation Resource Network can be used to evaluate the fit and feasibility of implementing programs or practices in a given context. This tool is designed to be used by a team to facilitate discussions and to ensure diverse perspectives are represented in a discussion of the six contextual fit and feasibility indicators. There are indicators that you need to review and evaluate first. These are indicators about you, your school, your community, fit, need, and capacity. And then once you have an understanding and are ready to select practices, you use the program indicators, supports, evidence, and usability. For today, we're going to look at the blue section around fit. We want to be thinking of our school climate strategies at tier one and our tier one attendance efforts. When we look at this, we're looking at, again, the fit. So what are the priorities of your school or district? How does this play into your district improvement plan, your school improvement plan, your turnaround plan, your strategic plan? What are the family and community values, including the voices and values of culturally and, ling and linguistically diverse populations? Is what you're doing representative of your students and families? What are other initiatives currently being implemented that will intersect with this program or practice? How does this program or practice fit with your community's history? A link to the hexagon tool is included at the ending resource slide. So we're going to pause for a moment of reflection and dialogue. We're going to think about the initiatives your school or district is engaging in around school climate and attendance. The initiative inventory can be used to guide your school's review of current initiatives to produce a clear picture of these existing initiatives, mandates, resource commitments, and much more. Information and data collection can be used by your school to explore the fit of additional initiatives with current work, guide decision making to make room for new work, and assist with aligning those efforts. So to get started with this initiative inventory, again, we are focusing crit critically on how this is relating to attendance and school climate. This should be completed and reviewed by an interdisciplinary team, which includes leaders, practitioners, community members, and potential service beneficiaries, your families and your students. This group should be familiar with your school's priorities and work. So you wanna think first about what are your school's currently funded initiatives? What are your currently unfunded initiatives? And those are what you would name in that first box under name of initiative. And then for each initiative in listed, you're going to go across the inventory. You're going to be looking at who is providing leadership for that initiative. Is there a team supporting that initiative? If so, who are those members? What are the expected outcomes when the initiative is implemented? What change is expected to occur as a result of this initiative? Who is the initiative meant to help? What is the target population? Is there a requirement to implement this initiative or report its impact and use? If yes, identify that entity. Is it the state asking you to do this? Is it the feds? Is it a special community grant requiring the initiative? What are the fiscal resources needed to implement this initiative? What is the total budgeted amount for this work? Along with resources, what are the human resources needed to support the initiative? Full-time employees, training needs, technology supports, coaching um, required. How well aligned is the initiative with your school's mission, vision, and strategic plan? What data do you have to measure the success or impact of the initiative on intended outcomes? Are there additional data you need to measure for its success? What impact has the initiative had on its intended outcomes? And have you or are you receiving external technical assistance support for this initiative? If yes, list that source. So you might wanna take this a step further and think about um, what these initiatives look like in the various learning models. So COVID is required that we get creative and flexible. So how are you delivering these practices in person, hybrid, or in remote settings? This would be a great activity to do with your attendance team. By thinking about the various practices that crop up each year, we have to be even more intentional about how the approaches align 
and can be integrated. All the approaches listed in this graphic work within the multi-tiered system that you've probably already built. What you need to do is match the approach to the student and community needs. We have to work smarter and not harder. We don't need to throw out everything we've done every time there's this new idea. We need to see where it fits along the continuum of supports, examining our practices to ensure that they're incorporated. For example, where does attendance skills show up in our behavior expectations for our students? So I'm going to stop and pause here for a moment for you to reflect on system change and implementation. What's something that you're already doing? What can you improve? Maybe how will you take the initiative inventory back to your team? So again, I mentioned some additional resources here on this slide. There's hyperlinks to the Connecticut State Department of Education's evidence based practice guide on climate and culture. The State Board of Education's position on creating a healthy learning environment that's physically, emotionally and intellectually safe and a school climate strategy resource guide. Please feel free to reach out with, to me with any questions or concerns. Again, my name is Amanda Pickett. I oversee the school climate restorative practices and bullying prevention and supports um, initiatives at the State Department of Ed, and I look forward to hearing from all of you.